Hi guys, it's lovely. So today my video is on a whim, so everything is very, um, you know, raw, I guess. Um, so last night I stumbled upon a BuzzFeed video called How Much of a Feminist Are You? So I was going to actually respond to the video itself, but then as I was um, watching the video, they said it was a quiz. So I clicked on the link they provided and it took me to the quiz and I'm going to take it. So I've already seen a few of the questions, not all of them though, just the uh, first five, and we're gonna take it together and see how fucking cringy it is. So this quiz, right underneath it, it says, find out just how woke you really are. I already know this is gonna be horrible. Um, so we're just gonna go together and listen to this. Um, I was going to try to do this on my computer, but my computer is, like, so noisy. Like, the air, the fan, whatever. You can hear it. It's so loud. Um, so I just opted not to do that. So I'll give you guys the link. You guys can follow along, and you can take the quiz for yourself. And if you do, tell me what score you get. Or, uh, maybe you could do a video and then send me the results in link form. So, let's begin. 1. I would be willing to give up some of my salary if I had to, so that equal pay in my workplace could be a reality. No, I would not, because 1. Equal pay is already um, achieved, just because you don't have the same exact earnings as a man doesn't mean you're not being paid the same, because there are a ton of other factors, and you know, Feminism is all for equality. Real equality is meritocracy. You should be rewarded based, rewarded based on your merit and how well you work. Um, there was this, this vine I saw um, where a reporter asked Donald Trump if women would get equal pay. And he said, sure, if they work the same. And it, it, it makes so much sense. I mean, you have to work the same to get this, um, the same amount, okay? If a dude is working for, like, 12 hours and you're working for 8, do you really think you should be getting the same as him when you're working less hours? And what is the job? What what exact thing are you doing? Maybe he has a higher position. Maybe you don't. Um, so, so there's um, so many factors to it, but feminists just want to be socialist. Um, you know, they want everything to be equal. And that's not how it works. Two, I believe that men and women should be equal. Um, so this is a very broad question. It doesn't say in, in a specific sense. On a surface level, I do believe men and women are equal. I mean, they have equal opportunity. I think they have equal rights to their opinions and thoughts and what they can do. Um, but then, obviously, men and women are not equal in other uh, circumstances. So they are not completely equal, and I'm not going to treat them as if they were equal in those instances. So no, I don't believe that men and women are equal. Trying to make two different things equal just isn't how things work. It's not how we're made to think. Three, I can't help but be bothered when a song includes misogynistic lyrics, even when I otherwise like the song. Um, no, because I don't care. A song can say anything it wants. That's the artist form of expression. I don't care what it says. It could say something racist and I wouldn't care. Um, there's this song by Mindless Self-Indulgence called I Want to Be Black. Fucking love that song. Um, Mindless Self-Indulgence also has what feminists would consider misogynistic songs. And a song called Panty Shot, basically pedophilia in a way. Um, <laughs> and I love all their songs, so I'm never bothered by it. I think their, I think their lyrics are kind of awesome in a shocking way. Um, so no, if I like the song, I don't care what the lyrics say, and I actually try to listen to the lyrics, because I think it's pretty cool. Um, so, no, I don't care. Four, I know who Bell Hooks is. Um, I know because I looked it up, but I'm... <laughs> I, I really don't. I didn't know until I looked it up. Apparently, she's a, a black feminist 
author, social activist. Um, five, I couldn't define intersectional feminism. I mean, I probably wouldn't define it the same way that um, feminists would, but it's basically feminism for everybody. Apparently back then, feminism was just for white women. So this uh, feminism is for all women of different colors and sizes and social statuses and all of that shit. Um, so yeah, I can define it, but I probably wouldn't define it the same way that they do. Um, so I'll check it. I have one point, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, six, I don't use the phrase, hey guys, when referring to a group of people that includes men and women. Um, actually, I do. I don't really care because guys isn't supposed to be a sexist thing. Um, it's just supposed to refer to everybody. I, I, um... I refer to pretty much everyone as dude, man, or bro. Those are all guy, um, those are all male, you know, male, um, things to be called. But I still call everybody guy, man, dude, bro, whatever. Mostly dude. Um, I'm not going to change it to dudette because that's too long for me. And I'm not going to change bro to sis because that's stupid to me. Um... Man isn't going to become woman. What up, woman? Because uh, that would be sexist too, wouldn't it? It sounds sexist and, and degrading. Um, but no, it just doesn't interest me to call people that. The only thing I have gendered towards uh, females is chick, but I don't say, hey, what's up, chick? It's when I'm talking about someone like, hey, did you see that chick over there? Um, that's how I talk. But I don't, I'm not going to stop using the phrase, hey, guys, because it's a... Uh, sexist or something because it's not um seven i have taken a woman's and or gender studies class as of yet i have not but i do plan to take like some sort of course when i'm in when i'm in college if it's not already mandatory um i do want to take one just to see what their thought process is and maybe debate in there i'll probably be taken out and they'll have to go into fucking safe space but um i want to take it to see what it's like and see how um how indoctrinated into this cult they really are and what they're teaching uh, young women. 8. I think it's important to encourage girls to pursue science and math as a career. Yeah, I do think that's important. Um, I mean, I myself like science and math. Um, oh, but it says to encourage. I would say, instead, encourage girls to pursue whatever they want. So no, I'm actually not going to check this, because, sure, it's a good thing, but it's not, that's not what's important. What's important is encouraging people to like what they like. I'm sure no feminist would be out there saying, encourage girls to think it's second, um, to have second thoughts about feminism. They would never do that, because they think that women should have a hive mind. If a girl wants to pursue something in science and math as their career, then you should encourage them. But not all girls are going to pursue that. So, no, encourage girls to ch make um, job decisions that they want to do. So, I completely, if someone wants to go for their gender studies degree, I won't care because that's what they want to do. Um, so, no, I don't think it's important to encourage girls to pursue science and math. Um, if it's not what they want to do. 9. Women should be allowed to apply for a job if they fulfill 60% of the job requirements. What does that even mean? <laughs> you should be allowed to apply for any job as long as you know you can do it or you have a good shot at being able to do it. That doesn't even make sense to me. If you fulfill 60% of the job requirements, uh... Shouldn't you be fulfilling 100% or at least nearly 100%? 60% is a D, okay? At least, at least a C. I would go for a B or an A, but, um, why would you be require? why would you be applying for a job where you only fulfill 60% of the job requirements? I think you wouldn't do so good in that job. Um, so no, I don't understand this. Maybe it's something I'm not aware of. Um, but no, I don't agree with that. 10. I think we should change women's bathroom symbols to not include traditionally feminine clothing, skirts, dresses, etc. Then how would you distinguish what, um, which one is the men's bathroom and which is the women's? Uh, little girls 
you know, ones that can't exactly read yet, you know, first graders and stuff like that. I mean, you should be accompanying your child, but let's just say you aren't there with them. Um, if they don't see the skirt, they're not going to be able to identify it. So it's just a, it's just an identifying thing. And you're going to say, well, where's, why is there so much um, social demand on women wearing skirts? It's just what women generally wear. I don't see what... Feminism tries to take out the femininity out of being a woman. So it's like, do you guys want to be the people you hate, which is men? I know some feminist is going to walk in here and say, we don't hate men. Well, you sure don't like it when men are their so-called uh, toxic masculinity. Um, so, no, I don't think that we should change women's bathroom symbols because they're identifiable. If you're not going to read men and women, if you're just glancing really quick, what if you got to piss really quick? You're not looking at men, women, you just walk into a fucking random bathroom. So, whatever. 11. I believe trans people should be able to use whichever bathroom they identify with. Um, so yeah, this has been a heated debate, hasn't it? Um, you know, I'm still pretty, like, with the whole issue... At first, I was like, you know, that doesn't really make sense because someone who's going to pretend that they're trans or, you know, identifies as that is going to just go into a, a, another bathroom and, like, molest little kids and do bad things in there. Um, I still believe that, but I think that if you are actually trans, like, not just identifying is bullshit, if you're actually trans and you've put the effort in to look like this, um, this gender, like, you know, Blair White, then you should be able to use the bathroom, um, that you identify with. But, again, I think this is pretty broad, and they're not too specific about it, so I'm not going to check it, plus I'm on, I'm on the fence with that topic. Twelve. I believe it's important to encourage women to negotiate. Um... Isn't that just a skill people acquire? I mean, I don't think that's really something you can learn. I mean, you could, but when you put it in action, there's a lot more to it. It's about your character um, and also how how much you're negotiating, what you're negotiating, who you're negotiating with. So this is more on you to figure out on your own. You can use books that guide you, but I mean... You can't really do much about that. You're, it's like a, a natural thing. It's like, if, are you a, are you a good speaker in front of an audience? That's that is something that you can learn. There's public speaking classes in college, right? But whether you actually execute it to the best of your ability compared to other people, that's that's something else. Like I probably couldn't talk in front of a, a large audience. People at my school say I'm pretty good at it. But I don't think I'm up to par with lots of people like uh, Milo or Ben Shapiro, people like that. I, I don't think I could be like that. I mean, I want to work for that, but that's something that I have to learn on my own. So no, I don't believe it's important to encourage women to negotiate. 13. I believe Jennifer Lawrence should earn as much as her male co-stars. And she did. Even more. In fucking Hunger Games. I'm sure she... I have heard that she got the most money in that movie, obviously, because she's the protagonist. Um, you should be earning um, the amount that the people give you for your work and the amount of time you're there. Um, that's how it should be. If your male counterpart is working, is in the film, you know, he's in the film twice as much as you, you shouldn't be getting the same fucking... Um, Earnings. Does Jennifer Lawrence think the extras should be getting the same amount as her? No, I doubt it. So, um, no, I don't believe Jennifer Lawrence should earn as much as her male co-stars. Not to mention, I don't really like her. I don't care for her. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't necessary to add in, but I just thought it was important. <laughs> 14. I do not think a movie should be released until it passes the Be Bechdel, Bechdel? Bechdel test. Um... So I have seen this test. It is so stupid. Look, if you <laughs> if you want your fucking movie to pass this test or like you want movies to pass this test, get out of here. Okay? That is 
that is unrealistic to put these standards on filmmakers, make them fill in quotas as if that were important. No, make your own fucking movie that passes the Bechdel test. Um, like, I want to be a filmmaker, partially. I like, I want to be a ton of things, but one of the things I want to be is a filmmaker. And if I'm a filmmaker, I'm not going to be making movies based on what a fucking feminist wants. Um, I have ideas for movies. Some of them are going to have maybe all girls. Some of them will have all guys. Some of them the will have mostly girls. Some of them will have mostly guys. That's what I want to do. It's what I envision. It's not what someone else says. It has to pass a stupid test because it's not feminist enough. No, I'm going to make a movie that represents what I want to, what I want to portray, what I think about. Um, so, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at a movie and say, you have to pass a stupid test. So, no, I'm not checking that one off. As of yet, I have only checked one. <laughs> Fifteen, I believe both genders are entitled to the same social and political rights. Yeah, I do. Um, hmm, okay, this is a bit different because, again, with the whole, um, thing about women and abortion, that's a, that's a right that, uh, doesn't apply to men. So no, actually, you can't have all the same social and political rights in that sense. Um, and also, I don't think women should be drafted. I actually really believe that. Women should not be drafted. And that's not just because I don't want to be drafted, but because I don't think we should be. I think I don't believe in the draft. I don't really support it, if there was one. But uh, women especially shouldn't be drafted. So, no, I don't believe both genders are entitled to the same social and political rights. Sorry, not sorry. 16. I can explain why 78 cents to the dollar is not a fully accurate description of the gender wage gap. <laughs> do they uh, Do they know what they just said? It isn't a fully accurate description of the gender wage gap because there is no gender wage gap. Um, so, yes, I can explain why 78 cents to the dollar is not a fully accurate description. That is amazing. Uh, they set themselves up on that one. 17. I believe that women who possess certain types of privilege are responsible for advocating for women who don't have their level of privilege. Um, in what sense? I don't believe women... I don't believe you should do anything that you don't want to do. Um, so, no, I don't believe that. But, uh, what, what privilege are they talking about? Are they saying white people should talk for, uh, people of color? Because apparently that's wrong, too. Uh, should, uh, skinny women talk for fat people? Because, you know, that's a privilege, too. Skinny privilege. Um, should, should that happen? I don't think so. <laughs> um, because apparently that's wrong, too. It's like, okay, when women advocate for what they aren't, but they're not a feminist, then it's wrong. Like, if they're speaking out on a topic, like, if I speak out on a topic and people don't know I'm black, they'll just assume I'm white. They say, you have no right to speak for people of color. Then I say I am, um, that I am black or you know, half halfsies, whatever you want to say, I tell them that, and then they're like, wow, you have internalized racism. It's so stupid. So, um, I don't believe that. I believe you should advocate for what you want to advocate. 18. If I had a daughter, I would encourage her to be anything she wanted to be. Yes, I would. If I had any child, no matter what the gender was, I would encourage them to be anything they wanted to be, as long as it's not something weird. <laughs> And by weird, I mean like a serial killer. Um, 19. I would make it clear to my daughter from an early age that her identity should never be defined by her relationship status. Um, I mean, who the fuck cares about that? I think that's just a complex that women create on their own. Um, I don't, I really, really doubt that girls are told, oh yeah, you know, your identity depends on if you're single or not. No, I don't think so. So I wouldn't make that clear because it should be clear to her already what she has, what her, what her priorities are. There are people who actually do define themselves by their relationship status, who just never want to be single. And you know what? That's okay. That's not my lifestyle, but that's their lifestyle. I can't do anything about it. I can try to convince them that it's not important, but I'm not going to tell them no. I'm going to give them examples of why it's wrong to think like that. But in the end, that's their choice to listen to me or not. 20. I believe it's important to compliment a woman's intelligence over her looks. 
Mm, okay, look. I like it when people compliment me on my intelligence and my looks. Why can't it be both? But, but, if a girl is, mm, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed, if she's that, what are you going to compliment? Oh, I like that you don't know what, uh, I like that you don't know what, um, mitosis is. I don't, I like that you don't know what, um, I like that you don't know the difference between a metaphor and a simile. Like, <laughs> what intelligence is there? And if a woman is intelligent, but she's not pretty, you know, in your opinion, because there's, you know, beauty is subjective, um, what, what are you going to say? Oh, I, uh, I like that your hair is blue, even though I don't like blue hair. I like that your lips are thin, even though I'd like them to be fuller. I like that, uh, I like that you're pretty fat. I mean, if you're not into that, why would you compliment it? <laughs> so no, I don't believe it's important to compliment a woman's intelligence over her looks when it doesn't apply to her. 21. I believe that a woman has the right to choose what happens to her body. Okay, this is about abortion. Again, it's not your body. Okay? There's another fucking body forming inside of you. Okay? It's like, I don't know, I feel like it's like if you had a... a uh, you know, one of those, I forget what they call it, but when you have a, a, you know, another person stuck to you, like your twin, you have your fucking twin stuck to you, I mean, that's a fucking horrible life, and if they can fix it, that would be great, you know, like, they can surgically remove one of them off of you, that would be cool, wouldn't it? So, but, 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 you know, there's some people that just have the fucking head, or they have, like, partial body of their fucking twin, and I mean, it's kind of messed up to just kill one of them off, isn't it? So, um, I don't think you should be killing things that are forming inside of you. I used to be pro-choice, now I am pro-life. Um, but the thing is, it's like, there's so many of these women, they're fighting for, for women's rights, and they think that uh, women are more likely to be killed and raped and assaulted yet they want to kill another human being and you know they try to act all peaceful and stuff but you're tr you're literally asking for the right to kill something inside of you because you made a mistake and you're um not taking any accountability or responsibility for it i think abortion should happen if you're raped or if it's incest or if there's some health predicament but you know if that's not the case then too bad so sad you can always leave it up for adoption People don't even realize that, and then they say, oh, you know, those adopted kids, they're living in a horrible life. Well, you know what? I think those adopted kids would rather be alive than dead. Sorry to say. Um, but no, I don't believe a woman has the right to choose what happens to her body in, in that circumstance. 22. In an instance of sexual assault against a female, I am inclined to believe the assaulted person is telling the truth until proven otherwise. Um... Okay, this depends. I don't if I if I knew some crazy lady who goes out and lies, I'm not gonna believe her if she tells me she's raped. If it's someone that's close to me, I'm gonna be like, Oh my gosh, what the fuck happened? So we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the police, they're gonna help us. Um so that's what would happen. But if they come out a liar, I'm gonna be like, Wow, that sucks. I believed you and you lied. Um there's innocent until proven guilty here, and that's what we have to stand by. And we all know that there's three sides to a story. Your story, the other person's story, and the truth. Um, only, well, sometimes the the truth, you know, it's never found out. Justice isn't served. But when it is, it's good. And we should try to work towards making sure that... Uh, this all works out, you know, that the actual result is what happened. Like, if someone is falsely accused, they shouldn't be going to jail, but it happens. And if someone is accused, but, and it's true that they did it and they don't go to jail, you know, we should try to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen, but the system isn't perfect. Nothing is perfect. So, it's a bit sad, but it's true. Um, let's see, next. 23. I can explain Marlene I can explain Marlene Dietrich's influence on women's fashion. 
Well, I don't know who Marlene Dietrich is, so I'm not going to check that one off. 24. I know what a bad feminist is. Um, they put it in quotes, so I'm guessing that means they're talking about the book by Roxane Gay. So yes, I know what a bad feminist is. I have not read it, so maybe I don't know. But I do know what the book is, and since they weren't really being specific, um, just going to go with that. 25. I believe that women should be able to dress however they want without it dictating how they are treated by society. No, I don't believe that because everyone is treated by society based on whatever fucking reason. Um, if I see someone wearing a fucking shirt that, like, I don't know, says something trashy on it, I don't know. Actually, I wouldn't care about that. Let me have a better example. Um... Hmm, if I see someone <laughs> if I see someone with a Scientology shirt, I'm probably gonna think they're trying to scam me. If I see someone with a shirt that says feminist, I'm probably going to cringe. Um so yeah, you know, the way you dress says a lot about you. Um you know, fucking fedoras, people don't like those and they are like, oh man, there goes a guy with a fedora. So yeah, actually people are treated differently based on how people perceive them if they don't really know them. So you know what? You can't stop how society sees you. That's the thing. They're trying to stop how society views people. Um, society is always going to view people as, um, you know, however they want. And it's on an individual basis. So, no, I don't believe that women should be able to dress however they want without it dictating how they are treated by society. They can dress however they want, but it's not going to change how society sees them. 26. I have never said that a woman asked for it. Um, I have never said that. Um, maybe I have, but not in a rape sense. So no, I have never said that. Um, so next. 27. I am offended by catcalling. No, sometimes I'm flattered, and it's never happened to me, so... Like, the closest form of catcalling that's ever happened to me is by girls. So, um, I mean, it it was it's like whatever to me. I don't really care if someone compliments me on how I look. Um, and if it ever does happen to me, I probably wouldn't care either. Like, if a guy did it to me, I probably wouldn't care. I'd probably go along with it and laugh. It depends on what the person says. Like, if someone says something obscene to me, I'll probably respond in a very obscene way. Um, so no, I'm not offended by it. 28. I don't think women should get VIP treatment at nightclubs and bars just for being women. Oh, good, finally some actual equality. No, I don't think they should be getting VIP treatment at nightclubs and bars just for being women. 29. I think police brutality and its correlation with race is a feminist issue. I don't think it's a feminist issue. I mean, you know, they try to make their intersectionality all about that stuff. But feminism is about gender. This other stuff can be a different thing. I, it's obviously not racism. That's that's not what it's going to be called. But if somebody wants to make another fucking thing, apparently feminism is just every fucking social justice thing in one. But no, I don't think there's a correlation between the two. Except in their world. 30. I think we should stop promoting models as the ideal female body type. Do we promote models as the female the ideal female body type, do we really? Because I've never been told that. I mean, look, people have said I look like a model. I don't even want to brag. Like, I'm the type of person who doesn't like to talk about their looks. I feel like it's immodest. It's not very humble. Um, so, we're just going to get past that. So, I've been told I look like a model before. Right? But that's not because the ideal female body type was a model to me. I don't believe in an ideal female body type. I believe in what I think looks good on me. And I used to be chubby, but now I'm skinny. And that's because I was sick of being chubby. And now I look great. You know, I feel great too. So what I think is promoted is a healthy body type, not fucking model body type. Um... But that's completely subjective. I mean, it depends on how you were raised. So I'm not going to check that one off either. 31. I think we should stop photoshopping women's bodies in the media. Um, yeah, I can actually, I can check that one. 
I don't care, but I think that if people don't want to be photoshopped, then they shouldn't. Oh, okay, now I am, see, I'm going back on what I said. Uh, there are actually women who like to be photoshopped. Like, I remember, like, like I watched America's Next Top Model, and Tara Banks once said, you know, I'm so big that it doesn't matter if I get fat, I can be photoshopped. So maybe, perhaps, maybe perhaps it's okay. If you want to be photoshopped, I guess you can go for it. That's, I mean, these feminists say that, and then they use Snapchat filters that, you know, make their eyes bigger and do other shit to them, add makeup to them and stuff like that. So that's basically photoshopping in itself. Um, so you know what? Go for whatever you want. So I'm not checking that one. 32. I have never called a woman bossy. Uh, I have because they were being bossy. They were actually being bossy, not your your trigger word for for being in power. No, they were bossy. 33. I think companies should offer more child-friendly time and programs to women who are having children. Um, that's the company's decision. I don't think that's something that has to be enforced. So, no. Sorry. 34. I believe that a woman should be offered the same opportunities for promotion as her male co-workers. Yeah, I believe that too. Well, wait. Yeah. I mean, I don't see I don't see any any loophole in this one. <laughs> um Yeah, if if they are offering some sort of opportunity, then it should be offered to all the workers. Um unless it's something gender specific. I mean, I don't know if women are going to want to go out and like lift heavy things, but let's just say this is in a company-like place, you know, like BuzzFeed. Um then yeah, all all uh promotion opportunities like I don't know what whatever, you know, that they have. Oh, we're going to have tryouts for you to become a higher up. Sure. I believe that equal opportunity. Just don't expect don't expect to uh be chosen cuz you're a woman. 35. I believe that if a woman wants to pay on a date, her date should let her. Okay, this is a uh... See the whole there's a societal thing where men pay for dates. And I think it's kind of messed up, but you know, sometimes it's like, hey, maybe you should be paying for the date. This is pretty traditional. <laughs> um I wouldn't want to use a guy like that. I feel like that's messed up. I've always I've I've always thought just split the bill. I mean, that makes more sense. But I think it's if it's on the first date, then yeah, I think the guy should pay, but other than that, I mean, you guys should split the bill. And if a woman does want to pay for your date, because let's say it's the guy's birthday and she wants to have a special day with him and wants to treat him, sure, yeah. I believe that if a woman wants to pay, she, yeah, sure. I'll check that one. 36. I believe that women should have easy access to birth control. Um, don't they? See, I have no idea, and that's because I don't, indulge in that because I'm not going to be thinking about that for a while um (laughs) I don't know how you get birth control but as far as I know of it does seem pretty easy to access you have condoms they sell that and um I'm pretty sure they sell those morning after pills but not sure I'm not sure so you know I don't know if I should check this or not but um well, isn't this prescribed by your doctor? I don't really know. I don't want to check this blindly because I don't know what it really stands for, but sure, I'll check it. I believe that women should have easy access to birth control. Um, That's just because I think that the population should be controlled. I don't want the fucking world to be overpopulated. Plus, I don't want people to get abortions, even though they consider that a birth control, which I don't get, but... But, yeah, you know, I don't want people to get abortion, so it's better if they take birth control pills or something like that. 37. I believe that in a relationship, the domestic duty should be shared. Um, what domestic duties? Which ones? Like, are you talking about inside the house? Because most men work on the outside parts of the house already. Um, sorry about the planes today. There's a lot of them. It's the weekend. People are coming in and out. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
yeah, though, most guys do the outside stuff, so unless you're going to go outside and work on the roof as well, um, then no. It all depends on what you're doing. So no, I don't believe that they should be shared. I think this is something that families should talk about together. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? That's how it should be. 38. I think that a couple should have equal responsibility over the aesthetic and cleanliness of their home. Are they saying should both men and women clean in their house? Again, that probably goes into domestic duties. Um, but, uh, no, I'm not going to check that one off because, again, yeah, it goes into domestic duties. Uh, I don't think that uh, women should have to clean maybe perhaps the guy portion of, of you know, their house, like you say, he has a man cave, he should be able to, to, um, maintain that, but, I mean, it just all depends on how you want to, uh, divide the power of, you know, divide the work, I guess. 39, I believe that men should be encouraged to be involved and make choices in the wedding planning process. Man, I must be so out of like this gender stuff because I already had the I already had the idea that men were involved. Why would the men not be involved? I mean, come on, have you not Like I don't get that. Why would why would the guy not be involved? I mean, come on. Okay. So I'm like kind of nerdy, so I would think that I would also kind of go for a nerd and we'd have like some sort of nerdy wedding where the fucking decorations are like you know, Legend of Zelda shit. <laughs> I don't know, whatever else we like. So it's like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's gonna want to work on it so we can have a pretty awesome wedding. Um, yeah, I'm gonna check that one only because I already had the perception that they were working on these wedding planning processes. I believe that men and women have the same emotional strength. No, because that's an in individual thing, and biologically, men and women have different brains. So, no, I don't believe they do, and if you're trying to make them have the same emotional strength, that's not how it works. Um, this is an individual basis. If you look at me, I have more, like, I probably have more of a male brain. Um, I'm not too emotional. I'm more logical. So, no, I don't believe that. Okay, 41. I do not think that it is the responsibility of a man to protect a woman physically. Um... I can actually agree with that one. I don't think that if, okay, like, you know, if, if a woman's in danger, but you're also in danger, this is up to you to make the decision whether you're going to protect them. If you know this woman, I think that's pretty messed up. Like, if you guys are pretty close, like, if my boyfriend didn't protect me or something, it would be kind of messed up, but I also see why he wouldn't, um, you know, in that situation. But if someone's beating me up, you should probably jump in. If he can do it, like if I, if I, like I also have like more of a inclin inclination to be attracted to uh, skinny guys, very scrawny. That's my type. Um, I can understand why he wouldn't be able to physically protect me. <laughs> um, but you know, it's thought that counts. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's uh, a man's responsibility to protect a woman physically. Especially if it's if it endangers both of them. So, yeah. 42. I believe that men and women should be equally encouraged to express their emotions. Uh, again, with the encourage thing. No, I don't think you should be encouraging anyone to express their emotions. <laughs> I know, I messed up. I messed up. Um, when I think of emotions, I think of sadness, mostly. Um, if you're extra happy, I guess, go ahead for it. Um... If you're mad, no, you should not be expressing those emotions. Not really. Um, so yeah, it all depends on what you, you consider it. But no, uh, I think there's a time and place for everything. That's up to you if you want to uh, express your emotions. I don't express mine that often, so maybe I have some sort of bias. But I mean, talking into here, I, I do pretty much get to express what I do want to express, which are my thoughts, and that's more important to me than my emotions. I'm sure there's emotions with the thoughts, but not that I am aware of. 43. I have never asked a woman why she does not have children. No, I've never asked a woman that because it doesn't matter to me, and I'm probably also going to be 
a childless woman because I don't want to go through birth. <laughs> if I can have one of those, like, I don't know, those people that has the child for you, then I would do that. But, uh, no, I would not want to go through birth. That is just so stupid. <laughs> so stupid to me. Um, yeah, I don't, I just, painful, man. That just looks painful. So, no, I wouldn't, I've never asked a woman that because, you know, she prioritizes something else in her life. Um, plus, children are an economic burden. <laughs> um, 44. I would be equally excited to have a son or a daughter. <laughs> um, equally excited in different ways. If I had a son, I'd probably want to do different things with him than if I had a daughter. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm, more equal, I'm equally excited to have a cool kid. Hopefully not a sucky kid, but if I end up having a kid that sucks and it becomes a feminist, I mean, like, I'll be like, oh, great for you, but, like, hey, watch my videos. Um, you know, I would, I would also be equally disappointed in finding out I have a, I have a kid because I don't want to have a kid. Um, let's see, let's just, son or daughter. If I had a son, I, I don't know what I would do with the son. Yeah, that would be more of a, hey, Dad, here you go. Um, yeah, if I had a son, I feel like if I had a son, he'd be really, really cool about movies. I don't know why I have this idea that he'll be really, really cool about movies. Like, we'll get to watch tons of movies together. And if I had a daughter, I feel like we'd be going out and, like, I don't know, fucking, fucking, like, things in Los Angeles or something, like, I don't know, like, there's lots of activities in Los Angeles. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it with my son either, but I feel like I would go out and do fucking workshops with my daughter or something. Like, drawing workshops or shit like that. Um, so I feel like I would do different things with a different child. But at the same time, I would probably do all the same shit. I just have a perception of what having this child would be like. Um, so I guess I'll check it. I guess... 45. I think American workplace culture is often not structured in a way that is helpful or encouraging to women succeeding. I don't think like that because I'm not looking at everything in a sexist lens. Um, I have never worked, you know, I don't have like an actual job or anything. Um, so I don't know yet, but I wouldn't... I base myself off of my merit. If I'm not getting something in the workplace, like, some promotion or something like that, or, you know, not succeeding, it's because of myself, and I need to work harder. 46. I think women have a responsibility to help and encourage other women to pursue their goals. No, they don't. No one has the responsibility to help and encourage other women to pursue their goals. You, as a person, can choose if you want that responsibility, but no one actually has it. So, no, sorry, don't agree with that one. 47. I think women are equally capable to men to be the president of the United States. Uh, yes, I'm just really sad with who our potential woman president is going to be. But yes, I do think that we have equal capability. Um, vote Lovely Fortune 2036. <laughs> 48. I believe that women have no responsibility to make a conscious effort to always be friendly and polite. Mm, you know, that's also another, it's an individual thing. You have no responsibility to be friendly and polite, but it's better if you are. I mean, okay, take me for example. I'm not necessarily friendly, but I am polite. Um, you know, the thing with not being friendly is no one really likes to talk to me. Um, or approach me. So, I mean, there's that downside, but I'm I'm kind of an introvert, so I don't really mind that people don't approach me and stuff. Um, but I always try to be polite, because it's in your best interest to be polite. Um, people will... People will help you out if you're polite. That's how I look at it. So I may not necessarily be friendly, like, oh, hey, hey, buddy. Um, I'm not like that, but... I'm like, oh, hey, uh, can you help me? And if someone asks for help, I'll help them. Um, and other things like, 
oh, you look nice today, something like that, you know, if on passing, and I, and I glance over and I see someone smile at me, and I'll smile at them too. It's just a nice thing to do. Um, so I don't think people have the responsibility to do it because there's obviously unfriendly and impolite people. But if they are, um, if they are, it makes no difference. I have never criticized a woman for not wearing makeup or wearing too much makeup. I criticize women all the time for wearing too much makeup. Only because I have seen it. I have seen people who wear all this makeup. And then they fucking take it off and they're just totally different person. Like, I think that's weird. Um, if you're doing it for a fucking YouTube channel or something like that, grow it great, you know? I mean, I can't stop you from doing it. You may look pretty, but it's just like... Why, why, why do you do that to yourself? The people who wear makeup, who are, you know, trying to get rid of being ugly, and then take it off, and then they're even uglier because the makeup does shit to them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's tragic. Um, have I done it to a person in real life? No. <laughs> but I still feel like I have. Um, I just don't think people should be... Like, even... I think, um, I think drawing in your eyebrows is the most idiotic thing in the world. Maybe because I like my eyebrows, but I think it's stupid. So I've said it before. I haven't said it to people who do it, but I've said it before and it makes sense to me. So yeah, I criticize people who wear too much makeup. If you don't wear makeup, I mean, I might call you ugly because you're ugly, but... I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I've never done it to someone's face, at least. So, I mean, I'm not going to check it, though, because I still feel like I, I did it, regardless of whether it was in real life or not, or just my opinions. Um, last one. 50. I believe a woman is a woman if that is what she calls herself, regardless of her physical attributes and makeup. Um, are you saying that guys can be women too? No, I don't, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not Tumblr. I'm not gonna validate your fucking identity because you want to be a special snowflake. Um, you know, people can identify as that, and if they ask me to, uh, refer to them as that, then I will refer to them as that. Um, but, you know, if someone wants me to believe it and they're just making zero effort in actually doing it, then no, I mean, if some some forty year old random guy was like, "Hey, hey, dude, I'm I'm a woman. Can you uh let me in to your fucking house because I'm a woman in need?" No, fuck you. So um, no, I mean, I'm not going to to do it unless there's someone close to me. I'm not going to agree with it. Um, it's also for religious reasons. I've actually thought about this for a, a while. I might make a video on it. But, you know, this whole uh, special snowflake change my gender, change my gender thing isn't very, like, I don't, I shouldn't agree with it. I don't care. It's like, it annoys me. That's about it. But if I do have the chance, I may make the, uh, the religious video. <laughs> so, I'm fucking done now. We're gonna see my fucking results. And I got 14 out of 50 on this list. Huh. That's more than I expected. I thought I was going to get, like, a little bit. I thought I was going to get at least 7. Um, you are pretty woke. Fucking hate that word. And you definitely try and stay inform informed about what's going on in the world of feminism and how you can make it better. Um, yes, I definitely, I definitely stay informed about what's going on in the world of feminism. And I definitely... I definitely know how to make it better so that women are not becoming feminists. Um, so that's about it. It was pretty cringy, and obviously this video is way too long. Um, but I really don't mind, and here goes another fucking long-ass lovely fortune video. If you made it to the end of this, I am planning to do a live stream on Monday. Uh, I don't really know at what time. It'll probably be maybe two-ish. It isn't going to be on feminism. It is going to be on 
Charles Manson because I recently read Helter Skelter and I thought it would be nice to talk about it. I may mention feminism a few times. I've already written the script. I know it's going to be a live stream, but it's scripted as well. Um, but if you have questions, I'm going to answer them at the end. So if you would like to check that out, it would be great. And thanks for watching. I have finally reached uh, 69 subscribers. Uh, I know it's a little bit, but it makes me really happy to know that people actually like my content and that I'm not just doing this in vain. Um, so thank you very much for sticking this out for, with me if you actually listen to the full uh, 50 minutes of this. I'll see you next time. So, thanks and bye!